And what are we looking for? See, we're looking for a specific type of company, not just any old company to buy, but we want certain things to be true. And the reason I'm explaining this to you is when you start to engage a plan like this, you build an avatar. What do you want the company that you target to look like? And that's what you go after. You don't just go after anything because you don't want something that's going to really add value. So you build up in your mind or on paper an avatar of what it is that you're actually looking for. So I know I'm looking for a specific profile of a company. I want a company that was started by engineers who designed a great product, know how to produce it, know how to keep their costs down, but they don't know how to sell. Okay. So they got this great product and it's not selling. Why? Because you see, with my distribution system, I can fix that problem in an instant. And on more than one occasion, I go to my distributors and I say, hey, guys, I just bought this company. And look at this great product they make. Look at these great handlebars. Look at these great kickstands. You should be handling, you should be handling my, my handlebars and my fairings, not fairings, my crash bars and my tweak bars and all these other things that go into the, this custom bike. And they said, we do that, John, Gordon, but, but we have these relationships with these other companies. And I said, well, that's not that's my concern. My concern is I want you buying my eyes and I'm only going to be selling my fork tubes to people who carry my full line. So you mean we can't buy fork tubes from you anymore if we don't handle it? And I said, that's right, because I'm only selling to distributors that handle my full line. So they thought about that for a few minutes and they cannot afford not to have this product. There's no one else that can supply them with the volume and the quality that they need. So they all agree to start handling my other product line. So now I'm selling everything that goes on a motorcycle that's made in metal. And I've taken my business from this million dollar sales company to a two or three million dollar sales company to a five or $10 million sales company to a 17 to $20 million sales company, all because of the strategy and taking this one little tiny product in the marketplace and positioning myself so my distributors had to buy it from me, couldn't get it elsewhere. And then I leveraged that into a complete product line that they then carried, but I helped them out, remember? We don't want to force ourselves on people. We want people to want to do business with us. So I created a revolution in the way motorcycle parts were marketed. Okay. When in, in the day, when I first did this, when you walked into a motorcycle shop and you were looking at buying parts, they were on shelves in a back room. Okay. And so you came in, you told the guy what you wanted. He went in the back room, he pulled out some stuff and then you started looking at stuff. We took and we packaged those parts in beautiful boxes with pictures and descriptions and, and created a point of purchase displays so that instead of putting it in the back room, they put our products in the front room because they sold themselves. So I created value for my distributors. I didn't just use position power with them. I used personal power, the ability to get them to want to do business with me because I could give them something nobody else could. So, all right. So now I've got distributors that love me. They love handling our full product line. And we're going crazy with orders. And not long after that, somebody came to me out of the blue and he was an officer with Grace Company. And it turned out that there were a conglomerate listed on the exchange. And they, at that time, owned another type of motorcycle parts company that specialized in plastics, fiberglass. So they made helmets, they made fairings, they made the gas tanks, they made all, any kind of thing you would make out of plastic or, uh, or fiberglass. And they offered me a decent price for my business when you looked at the value of my business as a standalone business. In other words, if you just took my profits and my growth, you could say it's worth so many dollars because this is what it produces in profit. Anyway, by the time the deal was done, they gave me three times the value of my company. Why would they pay me? This is a strategic sale. Why would they pay me three times what my company's worth because of its profit. No, it's not. It's, it, that's part of it. The, thank you for that. It, it's worth more to them because they're a public company. Okay. And because they're public, they take those earnings and they're worth a higher multiple on the exchange. But that wasn't the driving reason. Okay. Distribution. Okay. They knew if they bought my company, just like I took those distributors and brought them into a complete product line, they could then use my distribution system to take their products and triple and quadruple their existing distribution of their fiberglass products. So that's why they were willing to do that. So I ended up selling the company and that was how I profited from it. Gordon, can I just interrupt for one second? Of course. Participants, he's not just telling a story. He, every, about every two minutes, he's dropping the most amazing wisdom and you are just listening. And I want to tell you that it is impossible for you to remember what he's saying. I want you to start taking notes. He is telling so many little pieces of wisdom in between and you are not taking it down. This is when you should be taking notes. In between, he's telling a story. He's teaching by story. And in between, he's just talking about all these things. Like right now, one of the key things he mentioned was what? Hello, say the word. You start creating your own flip charts, the way we create flip charts. So I understand that a lot of us do not know how to take notes or how to learn like this, but I want you to just start listening as a court reporter, like I used to be. 
and listen to every word. And then he tells the story and he's doing a teaching. When I was on the phone with him and he was teaching and he was telling me stories, I was on my computer just writing down. And I did tell him, I said, you'll hear some noise because I'm taking notes. I just kept putting all this wisdom so you can then apply that to your business or any business. Okay. So I just want to make sure that you don't get tricked. Your mind doesn't go, oh, he's just telling stories. In the last 15 minutes, he has dropped all kinds of little jewels. And can I just for one minute, if you don't mind, I like to get them on the table to get some support with their classmates and just go, what is some of the wisdom that you had heard? Turn to your classmates in your table. What are some of the wisdom? Take down some of those flip charts. All right. Thank you. Keep going, Gordon. Okay. I'm trying to speed through some of the, you'll, you'll notice I don't stick to the exactly to the thing because if I did, it'd be like a memory thing. And this is all inside me. I, this is my life. I've lived all this stuff. So it's easier if I just be in the moment and just share it with you that way. And then when I need to turn to one of the slides for perhaps a better visualization of it. This slide here, by the way, shows you the parts we made with the front end fork tubes, the kickstands, the luggage racks, seat backrests, things like that we talked about earlier. 